been a long while since we've had an episode of A Brief History. And to kick off restarting the series, I thought I would begin with a story I've been wanting to tell for a while about a subject that I personally find fascinating. Survival cannibalism. How dire would your situation need to be in order to eat another person? We've touched upon survival cannibalism in the past while discussing the Donner Party, and the miracle of the Andes is a story that I find wildly interesting. Today, we're going back to 1884 to learn of a yacht being transported from England to Australia that resulted in a tragic sinking and the death of a young cabin boy. This is A Brief History of the Mignonette. As always, this episode of A Brief History may contain graphic content and is not suited for all audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. In 1883, Australian lawyer Jack Wand purchased the Mignonette, a small 33-ton yacht, as a leisure vessel in England. Wand lived in Australia and subsequently wanted his new maritime toy delivered to his home from the yacht's location in Southampton, despite the fact that the Mignonette wasn't exactly built for long voyages. Wand enlisted the help of Captain Tom Dudley and his small crew consisting of Edwin Stevens, Edmund Brooks, and a 17-year-old cabin boy named Richard Parker, a name you may recognize from the book and movie Life of Pi. Dudley, Brooks, and Stevens were all competent sailors, and there was never a question as to whether they were prepared or experienced enough to make the voyage from Southampton to Sydney. Richard Parker, on the other hand, would be making his first voyage with the yacht, but had come from a family of seafaring people. The four-man crew left Southampton on the 19th of May, 1884, to begin the 15,000-mile journey that included a trip around the Cape of Good Hope. In mid-June, the crew made a stop off the coast of Morocco for a rest and resupply and set sail again. This would be the last time anyone saw cabin boy Richard Parker. The story goes that on July 5th, just about 1,500 miles off the Cape of Good Hope, a rogue wave sunk the Mignonette, forcing the four men aboard to flee the sinking boat in a small dinghy. The men managed to grab a small amount of provisions before deserting the sinking yacht including two one-pound tins of turnips and no water. Desperate to stay alive, the crew rationed out the small amount of turnips and took to attempting to catch rainwater anytime they were able, while also supplementing their water supply with their own urine. Within a week and a half, the supplies had dwindled to nearly nothing, and the crew was severely dehydrated, meaning they couldn't even rely on their urine to quench their thirst. Richard Parker had begun drinking seawater in desperation. The four men, terrified, needed to find a way to survive and be rescued. Eventually, the captain of the boat, Dudley, made the suggestion that they draw straws, with the short straw being the man that would be killed and subsequently eaten to save his fellow crew members. The custom of the sea, he called it. Parker was delirious from seawater at this point and seemed to have no opinion one way or the other. Brooks was disgusted by the idea of killing and eating someone, but was outvoted by Dudley and Stevens, who both had families to support back home. After three weeks of being adrift at sea, the decision was made to go forward, though no straws would ever be drawn. Parker was getting weaker and weaker by the day, and Dudley insisted that Parker would be their saving grace since he was on the path to death anyway, and likely did not stand to live much longer regardless of whether they made the decision to cannibalize him or not. Stevens held down Parker's legs to save from a struggle, and Dudley cut Parker's jugular. The young boy's blood was caught and passed around the three remaining crew members to deal with their thirst, and then they butchered the boy. The crew ate his heart and liver immediately, while slicing off bits of flesh for future rations. After cutting away what they could, they tossed Parker's remains overboard. Just as the meat they had pulled from Parker's body began to rot, the three remaining men spotted a ship on the horizon around July 29, 1884. The Montezuma, a German ship sailing for Hamburg, would eventually spot the dinghy and subsequently rescue the men. In September of the same year, they arrived back in England and made no attempt to hide what they had done to 17-year-old Richard Parker. 
After all, Dudley was adamant that what they had done was justified, and even a maritime tradition for those desperate enough. While making arrangements to return home to their families, warrants for their arrest were granted, and the three men were taken into custody for the brutal murder of Richard Parker. Brooks was quickly exonerated for his part, due to the fact that he was shown to be against the butchering of the boy and played little part in even the discussions of killing Parker. Dudley and Stevens, on the other hand, were indicted for murder, despite the general public rallying around the survivors of the Minonet. Even Richard Parker's brother shook hands with the two men, as almost forgiveness from the Parker family. The trial was opened with Judge Baron Huddleston putting forth an explanation that there was no justification for killing within the realm of the law. With murder being a capital crime, thereby punishable by death, the jury was weary to render a guilty verdict. And Huddleston offered the jury the option of a special verdict that would leave the fate of the men in the hands of a higher court. Dudley and Stevens were found guilty of murder by this higher court, but were sentenced to six months imprisonment rather than execution. The men served their sentences at Holloway Prison and eventually returned to their families. The case of the murder on the Mionette did provide a legal stance on the, quote, custom of the sea, and is still used to this day in law classes to introduce necessity as a defense to murder. Would you, or could you, in an act of sheer desperation, eat another person in order to save yourself? We may think that we know what we would do, but until we are put in that same situation, it is merely speculation. Thank you for joining me for this episode of A Brief History. Thank you to my patrons who support me and this series, and I'll see you next time.